you know, Kirby, the lovable pup ball, is celebrating his 30th anniversary this year. Also recently, the newest game in the franchise, Kirby and the Forgotten Land, has been released. But you can go to about a thousand and one different channels to hear about that game. Today, Shasta and I would like to go back to the past and take a gander at the very first game in the series, Kirby's Dreamland. So without further ado, let's jump into this game's history. The visionary that we have to thank for Kirby's existence is Masahiro Sakurai. Y'all folks also might know him as the main dude behind the Smash series. That alone is enough to convince me that he's among one of the greatest devs who ever programmed. He's just too awesome. Anyway, when Mr. Sakurai and his team at HAL Labs were at the conceptual stage of the game's development, Kirby, or Popopo as he was called at this point, was given a very simple placeholder design. In fact, he was originally supposed to be a child character, but the devs liked Kirby's simplistic design so much that they decided to just keep it. Halfway through development though, Hal had hit a roadblock. Initially, they were supposed to publish the game by themselves, but unfortunately, Hal received very few advance orders. This got Mr. Sakurai thinking, if we can't publish it, then why not have Nintendo do it? To which Nintendo agreed, and HAL Labs became a full-time second party. With Nintendo as the game's publishers, development was moved from the NES to the Game Boy. Popopo's name was changed to Kirby, in honor of one of the company's lawyers, and an extensive series of ads for the game were put out. During the final stages of Kirby's creation, Mr. Sakurai found himself in a dispute with Shigeru Miyamoto. Mr. Miyamoto wanted Kirby to be colored yellow for the box art, whereas Mr. Sakurai always intended for Kirby to be pink. This disagreement lasted all the way up to within mere weeks of the game's launch. It was so bad that Nintendo of America pretty much said, fuck it, and colored Kirby white for the North American box art. Mr. Sakurai would eventually have his way, and Kirby would forever be colored pink. Finally, on April 7, 1992, Kirby's Dreamland hit the market, taking gamers and critics by storm. Everyone loved this game, and today, it's considered one of the Game Boy's all-time classics. stood out for me for the franchise is its happy nature. Nothing quite exemplifies that as much as the franchise's music. Take a listen to that. Doesn't that just make y'all want to smile? This upbeat and energetic music can be found throughout the entire game. It's excellent. Here are a couple tunes that are my personal favorites. composer for Kirby's Dream Land is this man pictured here named Jun Ishikawa. This guy has done the music for nearly every Kirby game, and he also did the music for all five of the Super Smash Bros. games. Yeah, Mr. Ishikawa is a hell of a musician, and has totally earned his spot among the likes of other composers such as Bobby Prince and Koji Kondo. The plot of Kirby's Dream Land might be simple, but cool shit sometimes comes in simple packaging. 
Far away in a place called Dreamland, Kirby and his friends play and gather food with their magical sparkling stars. One night, the fat and greedy King Dedede decides to steal all the food and stars in Dreamland, taking it back to his castle on Mount Dedede. Without the sparkling stars, the Dreamlanders can't gather food, and a famine soon starts. Suddenly, Kirby takes it upon himself to track King Dedede back to his mountain and return the stars and food to the people. After battling his way through a few of Dedede's henchmen, Kirby finally makes it to the castle. From there, the King and Kirby have a wrestling match. Ultimately, Dedede loses, and Kirby returns all the food and stars to the Dreamlanders. You're so right, Shasta. Kirby steals from the rich, and he gives to the needy. Anyway, besides a neat story, Kirby has three abilities to help him fight the bad guys. I should note that Kirby's copy technique is not in this game. It wouldn't be until the second title, Kirby's Adventure, where he would be given that power. That's not really a problem for this game, though, seeing as how the game is built around the mechanics given. Kirby can still suck up, spit out, and swallow enemies. He can also fly, which means if you want, you can totally bypass some enemies and obstacles altogether. Most of the time. There will definitely be some times where you're gonna have to hoof it on foot. There's also some pickup items that Kirby can use, such as water bottles and tomatoes that restore health, a microphone that acts as a screen nuke, and a plate of spicy curry, which gives you the ability to shoot flames. In a sense, Kirby is quite stacked. He may not have his signature ability yet, but he still kicks ass. As with any good platformer, the levels in Kirby's Dream Land are hella fun. In all, there are five stages to play through. Green Greens, Castle Lolo, Float Island, Bubbly Clouds, and Mount Dedede. The first two stages are quite easy, but once you get to Float Island, the game starts to get incrementally more difficult. I should say, however, that you're never really put through what I like to call a gauntlet by the time you hit the last two stages. This leads me to another good thing about Kirby's Dream Land. The game is pretty easy, but fair. As Shasta mentioned earlier, the game is very approachable. Practically anyone can pick up this game and do okay at it. If I could describe the stages in any other way other than what they're themed after, I would say that they're all unique to Kirby himself. The devs didn't copy and paste the Mario design. They made the stages just as intricate as the main character. This, dear watchers, is what sets a good platformer apart from the dregs like Awesome Possum and Fantasia. They gave Kirby a set amount of powers, and they built the game around those powers. level you have a fun little battle with a boss, many of which have gone on to appear in other Kirby titles. The boss of level 1 is Wispy Woods. He's basically a Kirby World version of one of the Ents from Lord of the Rings. That's really cool to me, because I happen to be a Lord of the Rings fan. The second boss, or bosses rather, because technically there's two, is Lolo and La La La. Stupid names aside, these guys were actually featured in games of their own before Kirby's Dream Land was even made. I may do a side review of some of those low 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 games in the not too distant future. Anyway, the third level's boss is Kabula, the Zeppelin. She's actually my favorite because that's when shit changes up and the game becomes a side-scrolling shooter. The fourth and possibly most iconic boss in the franchise is fan favorite Krako. King Dedede might be the final guy that you fight, but it's Krako who will really kick your ass if you ain't careful. Speaking of King Dedede, he's the final boss, and to be honest, he really isn't all that tough to fight. He does take a lot more hits than every other boss, 
but he's a cakewalk once you figure out his very simple patterns. Well, folks, that's all there really is to Kirby's very first video game. I know that this has been a pretty short review, but that's actually one of the drawbacks to this game. It's just a tad too short. There's also no save feature, but that's a nitpick so it doesn't count. The devs did try to supplement the game's length with a code for hard mode once you first win, so that's pretty nice. It may not be much, but it does add a little to what is an otherwise very short and easy game. Shortness and benign difficulty notwithstanding, Kirby's Dream Land is quite good. It has a fun narrative, a fun main character, fun music, fun levels, and fun bosses. It might be a tiny game, but it's got a big personality. And you know, sometimes that's what counts the most. There are games, specifically platformers, out there that, while not bad, seem like they were mainly designed by focus groups. One final thing, and neither I nor Shasta can stress this enough, Kirby's Dream Land is one of those games that's literally for everyone. It ain't just the rating it was given. I genuinely believe that no matter what your gamer skills are, you can play this and you'll have a blast. Because of that, if you're new to the Kirby series, or just new to video games in general, then this, in my humblest opinion, is the best jump on point. Kirby's Dream Land gets a G for good. It may not be the best game in the franchise, but it was a damn good start to it. I recommend anyone watching this video to give it a try. You won't be disappointed. draw this review to a close. The two of us will be back in due time. Until then, good- Yo. Anybody home? Uh, yeah. Who is it? Acme Delivery Service. We got a package for you. A package? Well, shit. I don't remember ordering anything. Oh, that's right. I remember now. Listen, Mac, I'm on the clock, and I got other stuff to deliver. I'm just going to leave it at the door. You have a nice day, sir. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I forgot that you ordered that doggy voice synthesizer thingy. You got it, Pooch. I know how this works. Let's just put it on you. Like that. Alright, I think I know what to do. Let's press this. Press that. Okay, try it now. Est-ce que je pense juste à ce que je veux dire pour que ça marche? No, that's French. Let me try again. Mm. Okay, now try. Deja de hacer el tonto. Quiero hablar. No, 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 that's Spanish. Come on, where's English? Tune this. Okay, try it now, mutt. Is it ever gonna work? I'm starting to. Holy shit. I'm actually talking. You sure are, Shasta. Thank God. Finally, no more word bubbles. <laughs> well, my four-legged friend, since y'all can talk now, why don't you give the closing statement? With pleasure. If you good watchers out there enjoyed this video, then give it a thumbs up and leave a comment. If you really, really enjoyed the video, then hit those subscribe and bell icons. Me and Redneck will see you guys in the next review.